And joining us now, the author, the Pulitzer Prize winning author, Ron Suskind, the book entitled The Way of the World, a story of truth and hope in an age of extremism. Ron, thanks very much for coming in. My pleasure. You've caused quite a stir, but let me uh, get you to explain why you think the alleged crimes of President Bush and Vice President Cheney are worse than Watergate. Well, the, the way it's framed legally, Wolf, is that the CIA's charter says you cannot uh, run disinformation campaigns in the American public. It's an amendment in 1991. It's in the statute. So that if uh, ultimately in congressional hearings and whatnot, as they go forward, and there's talk of that in Congress now, if they're able to show that the White House directed the CIA, as I show in the book with lots of testimony, that the CIA was directed by the White House to do this disinformation campaign on this letter, there will be issues of legality that will be debated uh, uh, in terms of high crimes. And what you report in the book is that George Tenet, the then CIA director, was at the White House. Uh, after the war started, he was directed to go back to the CIA and forge a letter from the uh, former head of Iraqi intelligence alleging that Mohammed Atta, one of the 9-11 ringleaders, uh, was directly involved with Saddam Hussein and Iraq, which was a lie. Absolutely, and also that Saddam was actively buying yellow cake from Niger with the help of al-Qaeda. That's the Habush letter. It popped up publicly. Habush was the former uh, Iraqi intelligence. Exactly, and it popped up publicly. Tom Brokaw, William Sapphire, they all wrote stories or talked about it. And what's interesting is that that letter comes at the end of 2003 after all of the explosions Joe Wilson, Valerie claimed during that year. And, um, and the testimony of those involved in this book, and there's much of it in the book, on the record, much of it taped, is that George Tennant came back from a briefing at the White House. He had it in his hand, a essential mission sheet, a memo, which said the CIA would carry forward the Habush letter. Uh, Rob Richard remembered talking to Tennant for, about it. A former CIA I'm officer. Sorry, yes, a top official at CIA. I used to be a, a deputy head of a clandestine service, head of the Mideast or Near East Division. He remembers talking to Tennant about it. He also talked to John McGuire about it, who's also in the book, head of Iraq for the All CIA. Right, let's, let's hold off for a second. Here's what George Tenet says, because this is a very specific charge that you make. He was at the White House. Someone at the White House told him to get a letter forged making this alleged connection between al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein. Uh, Tenet says there was no such order from the White House to me, nor to the best of my knowledge, was anyone from CIA ever involved in any such effort. Who ordered him to do so? In the book, it says simply, it comes from the White House. There is some speculation in the book by Rob Richer as to where things were coming from at that point. But the specificity of the testimony in the book, and there's a lot of it, is that it came from the White House. And frankly, at the White House, nobody except senior most officials give this sort so of order. in terms of a specific person at the White House, you don't know who allegedly ordered uh, George Tenet to forge this document? What's in the book is direct testimony from the participants, and that direct testimony says from the White House, and frankly, no one except senior most officials at the White House would give George Tenet an order certainly like this. Who, uh, why would he deny that flatly, uh, George Tenet, uh, as he does in this statement? Well, what he says, to the, the best of my knowledge, I'm not sure what's going through George's head, frankly. No, he says there was no such order from the White House to me. Right, right. To the best of my knowledge. Uh, nor, to the best of my knowledge, there was you anyone from CIA ever involved in any such effort. Okay, now, now the fact is, is that what I dealt with were the people who were actually involved directly in this situation. Period. What people, do you mean, in, in drafting and creating this people have direct, document? People have direct memory of receiving the letter, talking about it, discussing it, and passing it forward. Because Richard, uh, in a statement that he released, uh, and I'll read it to you, I never received direction from George Tenet or anyone else in my chain of command to fabricate a document from Habash as outlined in Mr. Suskind's book. Further, today, 5 August 2008, I talked to John McGuire, who has given me permission to state the following on his behalf. I never received any instruction from them Chief N.E. Near East Rob Risher or any other officer in my chain of command instructing me to fabricate such a letter. Further, I have no knowledge to the origins of the letter and as to how it circulated in Iraq. Okay, uh, that is in accordance with what McGuire says with what is actually in the book. McGuire was leaving on his way back, so it wasn't in his chain of command. It was the, his, his successor who, who handled the letter. A, B, what's important to note is that is that um, uh, in terms of McGuire, 
Um, uh, he is not carrying through the letter to fruition. The book is absolutely in accord with what John McGuire said, and, and that statement doesn't even really deal with what's in the book about John McGuire. Why, now, when it comes well, to Rob Richard... This is, this is an illegal act, uh, if, if it's true. Why would anyone at the White House be dumb enough to write down on a piece of paper for George Tenet to go ahead and commit an I illegal act? At this point in the history of this White House... Uh, frankly, Wolf, uh, I'm not sure how you can even ask that question. There's a lot of things that happened in this White House over this period that people look back at and say exactly what were they thinking. In this case, the reason it's in the book, as it is, is from hour after hour of direct testimony from people who had firsthand knowledge of the situation. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in the book among the many disclosures. That's why it's there. Now, mind you, the reason the White House is so interested in this one disclosure, it's like a bridge between the CIA and the White House. And if that bridge isn't blown, there will be consequences, legal consequences potentially. And that's why their focus is really solely on that, not in the many other disclosures in because, the book. Because potentially this is a, this is a crime. Another explosive uh, allegation or, or charge in the book is that uh, the president of the United States knew for sure, based on what the head of Iraqi intelligence, who was working with the U.S. secretly, right. we paid covertly, million dollars, right? uh, that there was absolutely no stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, yet the president of the United States used an expletive, according to your book, and said, we're going to war anyhow. Uh, I never say the president knew by virtue of Habush, the Iraqi intelligence chief, meeting with the British and essentially the British and the Americans for his information. What I show in the book is that the case for war was already a rickety structure by early 2003 in January when Habush... And the war started in March. In March. The Iraq intelligence chief arrives. We handle a secret mission. We conduct the Brits are the point of the spear. We set it up. And he meets again and again with the, the British intelligence leader, chief, and they talk it through, many meetings, many phone calls. What does Habush say in January of 2003? He says there are no weapons of mass destruction. Now, there's debate in the CIA. Can we verify it? Is it denial and deception? All that's in but the that's book. But that's what the Iraqis were saying publicly uh, at the time. I remember interviewing Tariq Aziz, the deputy prime minister. He said they didn't have any weapons of mass destruction. Why would they believe the uh, Iraqi intelligence chief? Because he was saying secretly to the U.S. what Iraqi leaders were saying publicly. Well, you know, he was certainly a more credible witness by far than anyone who had spoken publicly or privately to the United States. He is their intelligence chief. He himself oversees whatever the biological program would be in the country. That's the way it works there. As well, he is in a secret back channel mission with us to inform us. Now, what's interesting about it is it's not just his information that there's no WMD. It's also, and Richard talks about this, McGuire too, and others, he gives us the mind of Saddam Hussein, something we really didn't understand. The British talk about this too, because the British head of intelligence and deputy because head of intelligence. What, what, what Tennant and the others are saying now is they say, you know what, uh, he didn't have any evidence to back up what he was saying, that there were no stockpiles of weapons of mass destruction. Well, Richard deals right with that question in the book. So of course, I asked him, he said, well, the problem was is that we essentially have a Bush having to prove the negative, prove that weapons he says don't exist actually don't exist. He says we weren't very strident in helping him prove that point. Beyond that, what you have here is a situation, as Richard says, where we, we helped them prove the negative, we didn't help All them, right. and we fell in behind them. It looks like there's high interest on Capitol Hill right now. Once yeah. they get back from their recess, opening up some investigations, some hearings, will you cooperate? Will you release the audio tapes that you have from your various sources and help them get to the bottom of what's going on? At this point, as a reporter for 25 years, I've never dumped tapes or notes to anybody. I am hesitant to do that. If someone were to call, I'll deal with that at that moment. What's going to happen first, almost assuredly, is that people will be put under oath with threat of perjury in front of Congress to deal with all of these issues, all of the issues of Abush, as well as other issues in the book. And, and uh, if you're subpoenaed to make all your documents and stuff available, what do you do then as a reporter? Well, you know, you first you talk to your lawyers and say, what should I do? And then you look at the, the broader national interests of the country, I suppose. Be uh, you know, the, the question I have is some of these people are now questioning your integrity, your reliability as a journalist. But you say you have the audio tapes to prove what you what, what you wrote in this book. Isn't, isn't it, wouldn't it be in your inclination to just go ahead and release these audio tapes and say, you know what, 
Here's, here's the evidence. I have worked with confidential sources on the record, off the record, for many, many years. And I have always hesitated and still hesitate to ever dump tapes. I deal with many people and background information, all sorts of things. I simply don't want, and understandably as a reporter, people to go into, uh, into, that, into that closed room. Based on everything you know, should the president be impeached? Based on everything I know, based on the evidence in this book and the direct testimony of people involved in many, many instances, there, I believe, should be further investigation with the powers of government, subpoena power, congressional authority, which is something people have been asking for for a very, very long time. Ron Suskind is the author of The Way of the World, a story of truth and hope in an age of extremism. Ron, thanks for coming in. My pleasure.